Hi everyone, Jason from MakeCara here with another Carvera how-to, and in this one we're looking at creating the fourth axis relief from the examples guidebook. The examples guidebook comes with every Carvera along with the sample pack of materials that can be used to complete these projects. The design files and bits are also included with your Carvera, so making these projects are an easy and satisfying way to get started with CNC production. Now, in order to complete the fourth axis relief project, we do need to equip our Carvera with the optional fourth axis module, which we can obtain from the MakeHara store. We overview how to set up and configure the fourth axis module in another Carvera how-to video, but it's important to ensure that the module is correctly secured to the bed of your Carvera and that you've prepared your tool head before moving forward. We want to raise and lock the dust shoe bracket in the highest position, then remove the dust shoe entirely. You can then secure the dust collection hose in place by using the clip on the tool head. It's also important that we load our bits in the correct order which correspond with the example projects as shown in the guidebook. Specifically for the fourth axis relief project we are looking at in this video, we will only be needing tools one and two, but this order can be utilized for all the example project files. First, we must load the wireless Z-probe into the charging holder. The 25 millimeter single flute bit should go into tool one. Our 30 degree 0.2 millimeter V bit should go into tool two. The 0.8 millimeter corn bit should go into tool three. The 12 millimeter single flute bit should go into tool four. For users with the optional PCB fabrication pack, the optional solder mask removal bit can go into tool five. And we will leave tool six open for the test probe, which is preloaded in the Carvera. Next, we need to secure our stock. For the fourth axis relief project, we're gonna be using a piece of epoxy tooling board which is 35 by 35 by 100 millimeters and we're going to secure it into the fourth axis module in the default chuck position. Before securing the stock we must find the center on one edge of our piece. We also recommend drilling a small hole on the center point to make loading and securing the stock easier to do. We can loosen the chuck of our rotary module using the wrenches provided. We also want to loosen the set screws on our tailstock, but we do not need to remove them entirely. First, loosely place the part into the chuck, then slide the tailstock so it makes contact with the center hole we drilled into our stock. Tighten the two set screws for the rail of the tailstock so it cannot slide away from our part. Next, tighten the chuck jaw so the stock is held securely in the center of our chuck. Rotate the knob of the tailstock to press and secure our piece of material. Then tighten the set screw at the top of our tailstock. Lastly, rotate the stock so that the corner aligns with the vertical axes or up and down as shown in the example guidebook. To prepare this job, we need to open the Carvera controller app and connect to our Carveras. Within the file menu, there is an examples folder that includes all the example files for the project shown in the guidebook. There are two files in the rotation folder for the fourth axis relief. We will start by opening the roughing file first. Once open, we can preview the design and the toolpaths before clicking config and run. When a fourth axis file is open, the workplace origin will set to the fourth axis by default rather than an anchor point. We need to set the X offset to be 50, which is relative to the right edge of the fourth axis headstock and Y to be zero. We also wanna enable scan margin, which will trace the length of our design along our stock. And we want to enable auto Z Pro, which will be set to a fixed position for the fourth axis module. Auto leveling is not used for fourth axis designs. Once configured, Click Run. The Carvera will begin by picking up the wireless Z probe before it scans the edge of our part using a laser pointer. Ensure this is between and away from the clamps on our stock. The Carvera will then probe the set point on top of the fourth axis module. The machine will start by roughing the stock using the 25 millimeter bit in tool one while automatically rotating the fourth axis module during manufacturing. You can monitor the progress of the machine in the Carvera controller app during the manufacturing process. Machine time for the roughing job will be approximately 50 minutes. Once completed, we can carefully use a vacuum to clear away some of the dust and chips before moving on to the next file. Be careful not to bump or move the part fixed in our rotary module. We then want to load the second file for finishing this example project. Note that the preview matches the current position of the part within the Carvera's rotary module. Press config and run and uncheck scan margin and auto Z probe as we do not need to run these again as we've already set these parameters in the first job. The Carvera will then automatically switch to tool two to cut the fine detail featured of this design. Sometimes it can be difficult to see the fine cuts that the Carvera is machining, but again, you can monitor what's going on live in the controller app. The runtime for the finishing file will be approximately 50 minutes. Once manufacturing is complete, you can clean off the part using a brush or vacuum. Turn off the Carvera before loosening the chuck and set screws to release the part from the rotary module. You can then carefully cut and sand away the remaining epoxy tooling boards on either side of this part using the handsaw and sanding block that comes with the sample materials kit. 
And that's all there is to it. This project really showcases the wide range of parts that can be produced using the Carvera by equipping the fourth axis module. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe as you stay tuned for future project posts and how-tos on the official Make Area channel.